Now, the President of the United States has commenced his ambitious democracy summit. It's a two-day-long virtual affair with leaders from over 100 democracies logging in for their speeches. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be addressing the summit today. In fact, Prime Minister Modi was one of the 12 leaders who were invited to participate in the main leaders' plenary session on day one of the summit. During the closed-door session, Prime Minister Modi said that the democratic spirit is ingrained in Indians and that the Indian diaspora carries it too, thereby contributing to economic well-being of the place that they have settled. He also emphasized the need for democratic countries to deliver on values enshrined in their constitutions. Prime Minister Modi will deliver India's national statement later today. Meanwhile, on day one of the summit, U.S. President Joe Biden called on countries to make concrete commitments to reaffirm their democratic values. Today, I'm proud to launch the Presidential Initiative for Democratic Renewal, which will focus efforts across diplomacy, across our diplomacy and foreign assistance programs to bolster democratic resilience and human rights and globally. Working with our Congress, we're planning to commit as much as $224 million in the next year to shore up transparent and accountable governance. There are three major themes of Biden's first democracy summit. That is to have shared commitment to make democracy better. Secondly, to share ideas and to make concrete commitments. And lastly, to fight corruption and promote human rights. During the opening session, French President Emmanuel Macron said that there is a dire need to have open debates. He gave the example of Afghanistan, citing how there is still a major challenge that we as a society face. When I see the resistance of our democracies to this pandemic, and when I see the autocratic regimes, I see the difference. Uh, we have open science, uh, we have open debates on sciences, and all these choices allow us to produce better. And we continue to live through challenging times, to experience uh, geopolitical tensions that uh, challenge our values, the Afghanistan challenge and the humanitarian disaster that came with it, show the challenges that we face and also the solidarity that uh, most of us uh, are demonstrating by uh, giving asylum to Afghans. This summit has been billed as a rallying call for human rights and liberty, especially after the West's back-to-back -back defeats, first in Afghanistan, then with Iran over nuclear talks and Russia over Ukraine. There's a long list of guests and on-air appearances with civil society groups, activists and journalists. The guest list also features Taiwan, not surprisingly, the biggest outrage against the summit has come from its exclusive targets, Russia and China. The two ambassadors to Washington have even penned a joint article denouncing the event as a product of Cold War thinking. And for more on this, our correspondent Susan Tehrani sent us this report. Listen in. More than 100 governments were invited and 89 came along with the European Union Council as well as the European Commission to the virtual gathering of the White House's Summit for Democracy. President Joe Biden opened the two-day summit with the goal of showcasing the benefits of democracy over authoritarianism. And the White House sees the gathering as an opportunity and setting up what it calls a year of action, during which governments are expected to deliver on a set of goals and pledges. For example, the United States, those commitments will focus on media freedom, election integrity, anti-corruption measures and using technology to further democracy. U.S. President Joe Biden said that the United States, quote, will lead by example and announce the $424 million initiative that is pending a congressional approval for, quote, democratic renewal. What that means is to expand U.S. efforts to bolster democratic governments 
around the world. Russia and China have both expressed dissatisfaction regarding this summit, calling it America's Cold War mentality. Beijing is also angry of the fact that the United States invited Taiwan to this summit. Susan Terhwani reporting from New York for We On World Is One. We On now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.